Hello my soccer universe! Olympiakos become the first ever team from Greece to win a European competition which is quite remarkable given that it's only the second ever team to make it to a European final. The first one being of course Panathinaikos in 71 where they were of course outplayed by a great Ajax side featuring all the greats that you might expect from this side. So a uh, really really big one. There's also a relatively weird 10-year cycle with Greek uh, soccer, you know, in 94, they for the first time qualified for the World Cup. In 2004, of course, the big one, they win the Euros. In 2014, they reach for the first time the knockout stage of a World Cup in 924. These were all for the Greek national team. Olympiakos becomes the first Greek club side to win a European trophy. So I'm sure this Olympiakos side will enter the pantheon of Greek sports. While well, it was a Greek tragedy for Fiorentina losing two consecutive Conference League finals, at least it will be next year also in the Conference League. Maybe three is the charm. I'm not sure if Italiana will still be the coach for them. And it also means that Italy will have only eight teams in Europe next season, similar to Germany. So yeah, I think probably also, you know, well, on the one side it would be cool to have nine teams. On the other side, I actually think it's not so bad because the coefficient will then be divided by nine instead of eight. So every win is worth less, which might be a uh, trouble. But let's also be frank, that was not a great final. That final stunk. It started brightly, but the final stunk. And it was going all the way to penalties. I mean, it had penalties written all over it, despite a little bit more effort being put by Olympiacos in the first half of all time and a little bit more by Fiorentina. But the goal came more or less out of nowhere. It showed that El Cabi uh, is a great opportunistic striker. He took complete advantage of a player who had just recently come on. I think that was probably the deciding moment of the game. But if it wasn't for that, it would have been penalties and yeah that would have been kind of the deserved result i honestly think neither of these teams really deserve to win it one on the night um let's talk briefly about it. I mean, there's really not much to talk about here uh i know in the fourth minute we had Podence uh getting a really good uh shot in that terracciano saves then uh there was a goal scored by fiorentina i think it was biragi that was a clear offside so of course couldn't count uh then uh bonaventura had the chance of the first half where i think he wanted to be too cute yes he threaded it through the legs of olympiacos play but straight at only uh zolakis um i think he would want that back because he was free in the box this one needs to go in. Then here's another one that I wouldn't even count it because it was just just a minute later again against Solakis, but he had a weird angle. Solakis was really close that one down. Uh, nothing to see from El Cabe. I mean, the first half, Fiorentina was all over the pitch trying to create chances, whereas uh, Olympiacos barely had any touches in the box. Just keeping it tight on the back, which tells you a whole lot. I mean, also the game statistics overall were all more in Fiorentina's favor. However, the offense was completely not present. Nico Gonzalez, and especially Belotti, absolutely not present at all. That was the first half. The second half, even less. I mean, it was intense, but I think there was more action on the stands than there was uh, on the field. And yes, then there was the Inzola chance where he mishits the ball. Um, it still was dangerous, and so like I had to make a tip over the bar. But that was the most exciting thing for Fiorentina. Finally, Belotti comes off, and you know, Ikone comes on, but he also was absolutely a no show. Uh, the biggest chance of the game was Iborra's header, a guy who already had four times won the Europa League. And you know, this Olympiacos side has a very, I mean, Mendy Libar is the coach, has a very Spanish influence on this. This is not, to me, it didn't really feel like a Greek team. Uh, this was very much Western European team. But you know, if you have a Spanish coach, this is what will happen. Uh, Iborra's header that just went wide. That was the big, big biggest chance. And then I think El Cabi missed a, a very promising cross. That was the second half. Overtime. Uh, Towards the end of this overtime period, there was a real pressure from Olympiacos for the first time the entire game. However, then once the break came, then it was Fiorentina coming out. There was, um, you know, Ikone trying not really get, get, get in there. And then, you know, an Eze cross. 
comes in and Biragi, who had seen a yellow card in all overtime and was walking on the line of getting Sand sent off, is replaced by Ranieri, who is then needing to mark El Kabi. And Al Kabi, an absolute shadow striker, stays with um, Ranieri, is not off offside, and then twists himself to put the ball with his head into the net. And that was the goal, they look at offside, but I, or in the first replace, you could guess this is not gonna be called back. It's not gonna be called back. And it still stood up. Ikone had the great chance to equalize, but then again, a move that everyone can expect. And so it ends in a 1 0 win for Olympiakos. Celebrations uh, in and around Athens. I should say more Piraeus, but you know. And then uh, tears, of course, for Fio Fiorentina. I have to say, I'm getting a lot of respect for Biragi, who is the tragic hero for me for all of these finals that Fiorentina have now lost. Because in the last year, where he got hit with the head and on the head and had all the gashing wounds and so on. And this did this time around, yeah, uh, tragic because he shouldn't have come off. He's, he's, he's a great leader, he's also the first one who went up there, collected the silver silver medal and actually made, uh, you know, put on a good face for, for, for it and, you know, took it up the chin, although uh, it must have hurt for sure to do that. Uh, at the trophy ceremony, of course, Olympiakos president Marinakis was present, um, you know, very controversial uh, figure, if you, uh, if you know just a little bit about him. You can Google, uh, Google, Google him, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad come, come with him. He's one of the most influential uh, people in Greece. And I want to leave it at that and not make a character judgment on there. I had to say I dug his style though, because he was all the time in a t-shirt up in the box, uh, cheering on uh, Olympiakos before the trophy ceremony. He put on a jacket, which kind of made him look almost cool in a way. Um, what I didn't like is that, uh, A, he got the last medal. They had one medal left. This was not meant for him, but uh, UEFA President uh, Jefferin just handed him the medal. And uh, may I just say, UEFA President Jefferin, he is the uh, medal robot. The way he has figured it out to a T, hand back, move on, hand back, put on. Uh, it's very, very professional. I've never seen that any, anywhere. And this is the model to go. I really think this is uh, a cool thing. And yes, um, for Tunis, Lits the trophy and then they give it immediately to Marinakis, who honestly you, you could see, yeah, he was not so overjoyed with all that and all the attention put to him. But yeah, hey, so be it. In the end, Olympiakos win it. And yeah, I have to spare a thought for Ajax fans. I'm absolutely certain when you are proud of your new stadium, which is becoming now the Greek national stadium, uh, unless there's a huge uh, event happening. You were really proud when you got this final. And now you're big, one of your biggest rivals wins the first ever Greek trophy in this stadium. I don't think this goes down well. I'm just imagining Rapid Wien winning uh, or Red Bull Salzburg winning the trophy in the new stadium in Linz and this would just not feel right. I did not hear of any crowd trouble, which I'm happy about. I have to say the stadium, uh, the atmosphere, it was clearly very one side towards Olympiakos. Uh, but it is for the first time in a long time that a home team actually won a UEFA final. So that's also quite the achievement. However, you know, you also saw that when I look at it back, that both teams were relatively evenly matched. With Fiorentina, you saw that they are probably have the better players and the better squad, but with good coaching, this can level the field. And we saw it already in the preview. When we look at the results side by side, they had quite some uh, teams that they had in common. They're very comparable results overall. So not surprised about that. Olympiakos, it was an absolutely amazing run to win this title. Uh, that absolutely has, has, has been saying, I don't want to take anything away from Olympiakos. I mean, if you beat Aston Villa, so convincingly, uh, then you'd absolutely deserve to go through. If you make this miracle comeback against Maccabi Tel Aviv, you deserve going that. The one thing that has to be said, and now I want to put a little bit an Austrian context there. Um, many in Austria kind of say, yeah, great miracle, but you know, uh, Olympiakos have always been a, they have a big dom dominant team. The market value of the squad I want to repeat again is 110 million euros. Salzburg's is twice that. So this means that Austrian teams, if they would make it to the Conference League, if one of the bigger teams from Austria would make it in the Conference League, you can make a run in there. 
congrats is a little bit less on Olympiakos, but you know, uh, it is not impossible. And this is also the hope that this Olympiakos victory gives to all the smaller leagues. So, and it's a non top five uh, league team winning. This is great for UEFA. This is great for the Conference League. This actually elevates to me the conf Conference League as a competition, really. It was meant for the smaller teams in Europe. And I would agree that Fiorentina, I, you know, smaller teams, second tier, not top tier, or maybe even third tier teams. Fiorentina fits that bill quite well as more or less a mid-table team with a whole lot of tradition, a very vocal fan base. In Italy, Olympiacos also fits it as the dominant team over the past decade in a, let's say, level two, if not level three tier league. And I think this makes it quite interesting. I also think the way it is set up this conference league is here to stay. And I think it was a great competition to get to. So yeah, the only thing I'm afraid now for the conference league, we have now a bigger stadium already. I mean, the first two stadiums were just above the 20,000 uh, spectators mark. I think Tiran was even smaller. Now we cracked the 30,000. I think we will get bigger venues, meaning that smaller stadiums will not be able to host the final anymore, which was also one of the features for this conference league. But I guess the bigger, the better. So that was it for me from the Conference League, an uh, interesting competition again. Yes, it is not the one that will grab all the headlines, but still it's the one that I really want to cover on this channel because no one else seemingly does. And for me, it is a shame that this, co that this competition is very much overlooked because you still get quite some big names in there. I mean, we had Aston Villa and Claire Bruges in the semifinals, which are two very historic teams, teams that have made it to the finals of the European Cup. In the past, and you have a fair, 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 Dinas and Olympiakos, two finalists that I think deserve to be in the final. And given the entire history of the competition, Olympiakos deserve to win this one, and they win it coming down from the Europa League, which is, I think, also a first. Yeah. Last point: this is now the second European final this season, very outsider one, at least by the bookies uh, and my model. What does this mean for the Champions League final that's coming up? I just don't think the Dortmund will beat Real Madrid, but more on that in my Champions League final review, which you will get tomorrow. In any case, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did so, and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.